Oh my goodness, it's the lost Incan city of Machu Picchu. What are we doing here? We'll tell you in just a moment. Hi everybody, Bob Sekoler, Sekoler Medley Team Remax Properties East at Machu Picchu, Peru. This was the lost Incan city below me. Why we are here and why we're doing a Peru tour in just a moment. First, here's a look at what's happening back in Louisville and Southern Indiana real estate. The Louisville and Southern Indiana real estate market is hot, hotter than we've ever seen it before. Homes are selling in not days, they're selling in hours. Home prices in some sections of Louisville have increased up to 5.8% in one year. And the forecast for increases in home prices this year could be as high as 4.7%. And if that doesn't get you excited about buying or selling a home, look at this. The projected appreciation of home prices in our area could go even higher. For example, if you bought a $250,000 home at the beginning of this year, by 2024, it could be worth close to $300,000. That's more than $42,000 in potential growth in family wealth. And that is why 66% of all millennials who have been polled and who are renting are determined to buy a home. Why are home sales doing so well? Well, millennials are very confident that they're going to be buying and they're just coming into the home buying marketplace. That means there are a lot of people looking for homes. That's raising up prices. And the reason most believe prices of homes will continue to go up is because these renting millennials will continue to look to buy a home over the next number of years. Daniel Hale, who is the chief economist at Realtor.com, says sellers have to think about competition in a way they haven't before. Getting ahead of other potential sellers could be even more of a bigger advantage this year given market conditions. Getting your home on the market now with a Socola team could make you a lot of money and allow you to find your dream home. We expect the Louisville real estate market to just continue to explode. Same thing with Southern Indiana between now and the end of summer. So if you're thinking about buying right now, is the time to jump on board and selling? Hey, you need to call me. More about that in a moment. First, why did we come to Matzo Picchu and Peru in general? We'll take a look. Machu Picchu, Peru was just one of the stopping points. Now we get another quite impressive view of the canyon. This is the Urubamba Canyon. For our Passport Mastermind, a group of the top real estate agents in the country who get together to explore the world while discussing the best ways to help our clients. It's the perfect combination to work and learn all at the same time. Machu Picchu means old mountain. And the other that many people have planned today is the young mountain called Huayna. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> this is the only place you can find the laboratory, laboratory farming area. Whoa! Muddy! <laughs> Our mode of travel throughout Peru took on many forms. The scenery, no matter where we went, was spectacular. He goes, no, he goes, you can, you, it's easy to get in, but he goes, you can never get out. Even traveling from location to location, we were always exchanging ideas. One of our first stops, a small family market. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. We watched carefully as baby llama wool was first cleaned. Very dead. And this is the cartoon in a lot. I am going to sacrifice the Wow. And then the techniques used to dye the wool. The finished product is impressive. Use pot to tie the table rat. So what the heck is this? Yeah. I don't know. No idea. It's a cool weapon. Yeah, no kidding. I don't know. They probably use it for they're making, they're making some of the fabrics for what? Yeah. Our next stop, exploring Peru on all-terrain vehicles. I mean, what? what could go wrong, right? Our guides actually gave us lessons and made sure we knew what we were doing before setting out to explore. Yeah. 
This was the first time I had ever been on an all-terrain vehicle, an ATV, and I have to tell you the experience was exhilarating. And I thank this Passport group for opening my eyes and allowing me to expand my horizons. That's Sandy right in back of me. Our group of Passport Explorers were on our way to a rare Incan farming site. So we're between these two mountains in Big Valley, which is Sacri Valley, guys. Located in Maras. This is the only place you can find the laboratory, laboratory farming area. Yeah? There, each, you can see each terrace has different temperature, guys. Ruben says each level down there was used by the Incans to grow a different type of crop because each level there was heated by the sun to a different temperature. Big box. Back on our ATVs now, we were off to the salt mines. You can see here is almost 4,000 poles. Yeah, this is private company. This is where they process salt mining in this building. And Ruben says pink salt has become the type of salt most in demand around much of the world. This salt mining is from the community, yeah, from the local people. Each pole, like two poles, has, you know, owner. Oh, it's so owned it's like from each, each, yeah, poles. The salt vaults stretched as far as the eye can see. Back on our ATVs again, and one last stop in this sacred valley. This place, look yeah. at that. In the right side, you can see Temple of the Water. Yeah, and in containment water was as a god. The flow of water is everywhere. Without water, no life, right? That's why the, in the Incas consider as a god. Yeah, that way is all this place is very important in Incantane. Yeah, and if you can see on the right side, in the high part, there is Temple of the Sun. And as the sun set, we boarded a train and headed towards Aguas Calientes, officially known as... This is the Machu Picchu Mountain, once again. Yes, from the river to the top, there are more than a thousand meters. That is almost 3,500 feet. And it feels like we climbed a lot of those feet. The Incas must have been in very good shape. You doing okay? Yeah. Yeah? I'm just trying to think. I'm not fit. <laughs> <laughs> After climbing, the first view of Machu Picchu is breathtaking. And today we're at Machu Picchu. Go figure. There is so much to talk about this place that I would spend the rest of the day and it wouldn't be enough. To briefly sum it up, Machu Picchu is an Incan city built in the 15th century and later abandoned because of the threat that the Spanish were going to invade. One of the big questions, how many people actually lived up here? The modern proposal is that the people that once probably lived here were 400. Or perhaps 500, no more. So what did this area really look like? You can see from this artist's rendering what Matsu Picchu was believed to have looked like. Now we see the other window, please keep coming, which is aligned to the other solstitial point. When? Where? Why? I won't say why, but when on December 22nd. Where? Where the sun gate is. That's the sunrise point on that day, in that morning. We walked through Matsu Picchu and were shocked that its dry stone walls were almost exactly the way the Incas built them centuries ago. Many believe that American historian Hiram Bingham actually found Matsu Picchu back in 1911. It had been completely covered by vegetation. As realtors from around the United States, we were all shocked and amazed at how well preserved these rocks, this city remained, were basically untouched by time. Just the thatched roofs had disappeared. And when you compare that to homes back in our individual cities that are less than 100 years old and in a state of disarray, you come to the conclusion that the Incans were quite the architects.
Our time in Machu Picchu was too short. We returned to Cusco, which was home base for all of us during this trip to Peru. We got a chance to do some shopping, some more sightseeing, and then take a look at this. We were blessed by a shaman. I think this is supposed to bring us really good luck. We'll have to let you know how this turns out. Oh yeah, and we're not quite sure what this leaf burning ceremony was about, but when in Peru... So we really did have a great time here, didn't we? We had a great time. So now we head back to the United States and we are ready to help you whether you're a buyer or a seller. Please do not hesitate to give me a call. 502-376-5483 if you want to get your home on the market or go out and see homes. 502-376-5483. I'm Bob Sekoler along with Sandy Sekoler, Sekoler Medley Team, Remax Properties East.